Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane. This video is part of my tips and tricks series, and today we're going to be talking about calibrating your television for video games. So as gamers, we all want to get the best picture out of our game systems as possible, be it you know, getting different cables, getting scalers, getting the RetroTink 2X, you know, getting all kinds of after processing, installing mod chips, and stuff like that. People have varying degrees of how they want to experience their video games. So, one of the things that people look over quite a bit is actually calibrating their television for games. And I'm going to break this down into two different ways that this can be done. Well, I mean, for, for two different scenarios, to be honest. First off is CRTs, and then we're going to follow that up with LCD or modern televisions. Now, I'm, I'm not the most technical person when it comes to this stuff. If you want something really technical, you guys need to go to My Life in Gaming and just view a bunch of their stuff on how to get everything up and running, but even though they go a little bit deep into a lot of the signal strength stuff and and various things that just go over my head, and I work in IT. So on with the CRT stuff. My favorite two things to get is the 240p test suite, and there's multiple ways to get this. You can actually get it on an EverDrive and pop, pop it into a system. You can, you know, pop it on into like a CD, a burn CD, and play it in a burn a system that supports burns. Um, you can modify a Wii, which is my method, as I, I modified one of my Nintendo Wiis to be able to support the 240p test suite, so that I could have a wider range of like I could test composite, I could pet test S video, I can test component all going into my CRT television. The other thing that I use is the Avia or Avia 2 Guide to Home Theater. The reason I like this is because it's a DVD that plays in any DVD system, and you can use it to, along with the films or gels that, you know, some film people would call as a gel, where it's just a colorized piece of plastic that is colored exactly to the right color so that when you're holding it up in front of your eye, certain colors disappear, and that means that you have that color actually calibrated properly for, for viewing. And I'd be amazed at the number of people that don't take the time to do this kind of stuff. Now, some of the televisions you can actually get into the real nitty gritty of like their settings. So you can go in and you can, you know, change the geometry. You can change all kinds of things. As a warning ahead of time on this stuff, write down all of the settings before you change anything because it's easier to make a mistake than it is to fix something. Unless you're a professional. There are people out there that do this professionally. I wish I knew of some in my area that I could actually contact to help calibrate, help me calibrate one of my CRT televisions because I've made the mistake of not writing down the numbers and one of my televisions, the vertical scrolling test for the 240p test suite, I fail it. It, it kind of waves and pinches in and all this other stuff and it's just not great. It's not fun. And it's a big, heavy television. I don't feel like lugging it around to try to get it to a shop. So, unfortunately, as soon as I can find someone to fix that, that's going to cost me some money. But those are the two things that I, I really do enjoy using is the 240p test suite and the Avia 2 Guide to Home Theater. On to LCDs. Again, I use 240p test suite and the Avia 2 Guide for Home Theater but you can use it on the multiple inputs. Some televisions have different settings for different inputs, and some of them don't. So you'll just have to test around and violate, you know, your, your 
mileage will vary just because of all of the stuff that you're trying to do. But, you know, I think it's really worth it. Also with LCDs, try to look to see if there's a game mode because less input lag is actually better for you. If you're really into looking up input lag on LCD televisions or modern televisions, ratings.com, that's R-T-I-N-G-S dot com, has a really good way of testing, and they, they just have a wonderful website. They're actually the site that I'm using to research when I can eventually have enough money to buy a 4K television, which television that I'm actually going to buy. And along with the other technical stuff, you know, you definitely need to go to My Life in Gaming. Another tip for LCDs is the turn off anti burn in, which is also known as rainbow snow. I, I know that it's kind of like, oh, I'm scared of burning an image into my television. And for the most part, most modern LCD televisions have resolved this. Now, you might see a little bit of image retention afterwards, like if you were playing a first-person shooter that had a white HUD that was just really, really bright. You know, you might get some burn in there. But the best way to resolve that is to basically find a snow pattern and just run it on the television, and as it keeps on, you know, snowing and everything like that, it should help release some of that image retention. I'm not taking any responsibilities on what, on like you, if you break your television or anything like that. I'm just trying my best to help you guys as much as I can without costing you any money. 240p suite could cost you money if you buy specific carts for it. There are, there are people on Etsy that will actually build a 240p test suite cart for systems and, and sell you the, just that cart. And, you know, there is some value to that. There also is some value of getting it on an EverDrive or on a modified system. I, my best suggestion would be get an old-style Wii that has the GameCube ports on it and install it on that with, after you've modified the GameCube. I'm not GameCube. Uh, the, the Wii with the GameCube ports. And the Avia 2 or Avia 2 guide to home theater just buy it. It's you can find them on eBay all the time. It's not that expensive, and it and it helps out quite a bit with color correction and all the settings inside the television to help you out. And plus, having those films is just really really helpful. But like I said, if you want to go into this a lot deeper and stuff, check out my life in gaming. Well, that's it for this episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.